Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I give honor unto God who is our life and who is our aspiration. I thank God for each and every one of you and just know that you are in my continued prayers. On yesterday, we began to talk about the fruit of God's grace. And so I'm still in this awesome book that I told you that I found while I am in my season of casting out. This book is entitled, What Does the Bible Teach About Grace? And I do know that you can get a free copy uh, from beyond today that's where it, I received it from and I did check last night they do still have it on their website it's one of the items that you can get for free literature so I'm passing it on to you I think it would be something great for you to add to your library of reading now today we're going to take a look at something and I never really thought about this in this way uh, looking at King David and the grace that God did bestow upon him uh, during his time of drifting away from God. And, and, and so we're going to take a look at that, how God did show him grace. He showed him mercy because he straight away, he uh, did um, take Uriah's wife and they did have a child together and then to cover it up he attempted to uh, his first attempt um, you know trying to get Uriah to go home to be with his wife after a time of battle did not pan out and then he moved even further out of the way of God by placing him in the uh, toughest portion of the battle and then instructed the other uh, soldiers to withdraw from him so Uriah could die but God forgave him that's grace that is grace think about your own life as I was reading this last night and I began to think about my own life how I have done things in my life that were not pleasing unto God. I know that they were hurtful. And I knew Jesus Christ. But I was living according to my flesh. And I thank God for his mercy. Let me tell you something. I thank God for his grace and his mercy. That he, he gave me. God gave me grace and mercy. He did it for David as well. So let's look at this in scripture text. I'm going to turn over to 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter. All right, Second Samuel, Second Samuel. Let's get over there. Pray that your day is going going according to the will of God, that you are allowing Him, His love and His power, to transcend in your life. All right. So let's let's take a look at this. Those are the mighty men. Let's back up. Okay. So, Second Samuel 11 begins to talk about David's sin against Uriah. The 12th chapter begins to talk about his repentance. I believe in second chronicle 714 i do it's a principle 
given to us as Solomon, which is David's son, about forgiveness. And I, I do believe we, we talked about this a uh, couple of months ago as we begin to talk about the dedication of the house and and this time during their time it was a physical building but we are the church and i believe that god answered solomon it says here because it's his promise to solomon that we who are his people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Well, those instructions, that answer came long after David had passed away, but it is still relevant to what David did. David repented. Second Samuel 12 chapter says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drink of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him. We'll be back in just a moment. And we are back. We're taking a look at God's grace. And today we're looking at King David. He is a man. He is a man after God's own heart. We who live daily, we are going to make mistakes. Knowingly and unknowingly. Nobody is perfect. The thing to do is when we make a mistake, when we do things that are not pleasing in the eyesight of God, is that we repent. So we are reading over in Second Samuel 12th chapter, and I'm in the fourth verse. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth the man that have done this thing shall surely die. Now in the instance that Nathan is giving him this example, Nathan is given this example of a lamb and you see how hot David is that he's saying that the man shall surely die and he also says and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity and Nathan said to David thou art the man Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and thou hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. So, David was not exempt. We are not exempt. But God's grace, when we do what second chronicle seven fourteen says humble ourselves you remember yesterday we talked about humility 
when we come to God in humility, we can receive his grace. When we repent and turn from our wicked ways in humility, first of all, acknowledge them. I sinned against you, God. I did it. We can't hide from it. God already knows what we did. We might try to hide it from people, but as we see here, God will release that to a vessel of God to come and warn us. You know what? He loves us so much that he would have another vessel to come and tell us of our wrong rather than us try to hide it and keep going on like ain't nothing happened. That's just not the God we serve. That's not the God we serve. To God be the glory. Be my guest. Come out and worship with us at Faith Outreach Deliverance Church, Bridgeton, New Jersey, 100 South Pine Street, 083. We the glory of God. We all will. No one is exempt. We all fall short. You know what, Lord? I did something that was not pleasing in your sight. And I ask you to forgive me. I really do. I really do. And you have to mean it. And when you turn from it, don't go back to it. Don't go back to it. Don't get a quick fix. Don't come in just so that the pressure can ease up off of you and you can feel good about yourself. Uh-uh. No. Don't take God's grace for granted is what I'm saying. Because you don't want God's grace to run out. Don't let his grace run out. Don't, uh, don't keep... Uh, I want to say, um, don't be a repeat offender just because you know God got some grace. Don't do that. So as we're looking at David, and this is so good, I, I greatly appreciate the writer of this material, including this experience of restoration so examine yourself as i said earlier as i begin to say take a look at yourself and really define and understand your relationship with god are you in a good place with him that you have his grace which grace is his favor if you have a strained relationship find out why Find out what's going on with your relationship with your creator. And ask him if I have done anything that is not pleasing in your sight. If I have done things that offended you, that offended those that I can see. If I have not been obedient to your will, reveal it to me. The thing about learned behavior is that if you don't know what you did, there is no correction. So we must understand what it is we did do. That's what Nathan did for David by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He gave a scenario and then, amen. Glory be to God. All of this, the way Nathan laid it out. And then he waited for David's reaction. And then he came in to tell him all that he had done. And David repented. David repented. So let's read further. It's all a lot. <laughs> So, verse 10 says, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me and hast taken 
the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto, said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. So he acknowledged his wrong. I sinned against God. Have we done that? I have sinned against God. Sometimes, I shouldn't say sometimes, all the time, God wants us to acknowledge He's already He already knows what we've done. He already know what we did. I as well I notice that our system keeps going in and out. But to God be the glory. As we're looking here and we're talking about God's grace. You know, when I got up this morning... And I got up very early this morning in the middle of the night and, and, and just reading this about God's grace put me in a place of prayer. And I began to pray for God's grace to be bestowed upon people. Praying that some situations well as those who walk in humility. God, uh, David made a mistake. He knew the heart of David that and, and that's the that's the most important thing God knows the heart of every man let's look that up God knows the heart of man that's over in our favorite book you know where I'm going I'm going over to the book of Romans Romans the 8th chapter, it says, And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. God knows the heart of man. He really does. He searches our hearts. So in this book, and I really encourage you to get it. Once again, it is free. Uh, take a look at Beyond Today. And it's one of their free literature books. David had drifted from God. But see, God knew his heart. He made a move in the flesh. So have you ever... Uh, listen... That's not even a question for me. So let me talk about me. I, I have made some moves in the flesh. It was not my heart. It was a move in the flesh. And I acknowledge my wrong. I was wrong. I did something that was not pleasing in his sight. I did not move according to his will. See, it's always safe to talk about yourself so that you do not get in trouble about talking about anyone else. And God did not give up on me. God did not cast me away. And he has no respect of person. He will do the same thing for you. That move that you've made, it was according to the flesh. It was not his will. Sometimes we move ahead of God. Sometimes we don't consult him and we move with things. Whether it's pertaining to um, 
ministry or business even in our own personal homes there are some things that we have done that we listen we didn't even consult God we knew it wasn't pleasing in his sight so why even ask him about something that we knew is sin against God but God knows the heart of every person and he knows the true you he knows the intent behind what you did and when he brings it to our attention when he brings it to our attention the things that we have done wrong don't try to justify it Lord I sinned against you that wasn't pleasing in your sight I didn't even ask you forgive me because I sinned against you just like God was not done with David God is not done with you and I he's not He that began a good work is faithful to complete it. He's going to be with you until the end of time. He is always there. He has a olive branch that he has extended through his son Jesus Christ. Even in the Old Testament, he said to the nation of Israel, the children, the people, I love you from afar. Return unto me and I will return unto you. Put away the strange gods and the strange things from amongst you. Understood? He is concerned eternal life. God is concerned about your well-being. And all we have to do, by faith, ask for forgiveness. The gifts that he gave you are without repentance. He doesn't take those gifts back, those ministry and spiritual gifts. He doesn't take those things back. He will cause a shake-up in our lives. That will cause us to turn to him and seek his refuge. Now that will happen. He will bring scenarios such as this. And oh the king just he was ready to punish someone else. He thought what he had done was hidden. There is nothing hidden from God. God wanted his attention. And it was more than about Bathsheba and Uriah. There were other areas in David's life that he had strayed from God. This was the tip of the iceberg. Don't get to the tip of the iceberg. Return unto the Father today. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to your own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path I believe he will I thank God for this little book what does the Bible teach about grace it's his favor it's his forgiveness I need it you need it we all need it that's our time for today we'll be back on tomorrow have a blessed day everyone